Photoshop is a great tool for tweaking photographs, digital painting, and other areas of digital art. But that's not all it's good for. With a little tweaking, Photoshop can be used to create quick and simple print designs just as well. If you don't have a program like InDesign on hand. Wondering what to do if you don't have either? Stay tuned till the end to find out all about Placeit, your in-browser solution to creating flyers on the go. I'm Abby Esparza with Envato Touch Plus. Let's get started. For our tutorial assets today, we will be using a pack of resources that you can find on the written version of this tutorial over on Envato Touch Plus. So first, let's create a new document, setting its dimensions to 216 by 154 millimeters. Since we are creating this for print, let's set the color mode to CMYK and resolution to 300 pixels per inch. Create new guides that will represent the bleed area. Use the move tool and shift to create a horizontal guide by dragging the cursor from the top ruler. Make sure the guide is located exactly 3 millimeters on the Y axis. You're going to go ahead and repeat the same process to create guides along each of the edges. Next, create a new layer, filling it with solid white. Create a, a new gradient overlay. In the, the layer style panel, set the white slider location to exactly 30%. Change the color of the black slider to a pale yellow, which is C9, M6, Y14, and K0. Use the rectangle tool to create a new rectangle shape, setting its size to 216 millimeters by 56 millimeters. Align the rectangle to the left top corner of the document. Fill it with a dark brown color, which is C49, M74, Y80, and K70. Use the pen tool to add a new anchor point on the bottom middle of the rectangle. Now with the direction selection tool, A for its shortcut, uh, play around with the anchor handles to create a nice curve. This doesn't have to be exact, we just want a nice swooshing shape. Add in more anchors and keep adjusting your shape until you have something similar to what you might see here, or something you may like more. There is room for experimenting. Drag and drop the People1 JPEG image from the resource pack onto the canvas. Use the Move tool to move the photo, placing it in the upper top corner of the canvas. Change the Rectangle tool from Shape to Path, uh, right up here. Now above the photo, create a new rectangle path with the rectangle tool, setting its size to 216 millimeters by 100 millimeters. Again, use the direct selection tool, A, to place the rectangle path directly above the photo in the upper left corner. In the rectangle tool panel options, select mask. This will apply a vector mask to the photo. Add a new anchor point to the mask with the pen tool. Create another curvy swoosh using the direct selection tool again, just as you did before. Using the pen tool and the direct selection tool, uh, try to adjust the mask into a shape that complements the first original brown shape. A quick tip is the fewer anchor points you use, the smoother the final mask will appear. Just play with the anchors and points until you get something similar to what you see here. Again, just whatever complements your shape the best. Now let's go to Filter Blur Gaussian Blur, setting the radius to 6. Go ahead and select the Smart Filters Mask. Use the Gradient Tool to fade the mask from left to right, using a black to white gradient. Create a new layer mask onto the photo. Use the brush tool to fade the stairs of the photo. Create a new brightness contrast adjustment layer, setting the brightness to 40 and the contrast to 10. Go ahead and clip the adjustment layer into the photo by holding Alt and clicking on the line in between the two layers. Create a new solid color. Setting the color fill to brown. Again, C30, M80, Y100, and K30. 
Click on the vector mask from the photo layer. Hold the Alt key and drag the mask over the brown color fill layer, duplicating the mask. Use the direct selection tool and drag the top right anchor point to the upper right corner. Use the brush tool to mask out some of the areas so that portions of the photo below shows through. When finished, set the layer opacity to 75%. Next, create a new rectangle shape with the rectangle tool. Fill the rectangle with light brown, C10, M65, Y100, K0. Place the light brown rectangle beneath the dark brown rectangle. And use the pen tool and a direct selection tool to adjust the rectangle into, again, a curved shape. We want this to just barely be peeking through from beneath the other two shapes in order to add a hint of color or an accent color. Next, create a circle, setting its dimensions to 248 by 248. Fill it with a brown color, C30, M80, Y100, and K30. Next, add a drop shadow layer effect, setting the opacity to 14%, distance to 5 pixels, and size to 15 pixels. Create another circle, setting its dimensions to 400 by 400 pixels, filling it with a dark blue color, C100, M80, Y45, K50. Go ahead and just copy the drop shadow effect from the first circle and apply it to the new circle, putting the blue circle below the brown circle. Add text with the type tool. This tutorial uses the Proxima Nova family. The top title size here is 17 points to help you with scaling. Do this with both circles, adding in any relevant information you might have. Create the main title or headline using the type tool, setting the font to Proxima Nova Lite. You can also try adjusting the size and weight of different texts to help bring emphasis to a word or phrase. Do not be afraid to mix and match. Once you are happy with the header, place your logo onto the document. I'll be using the vector logo found in the tutorial resource pack, but of course, you can use your own. Scale down the logo and position it towards the upper right hand corner of the header. Add the same drop shadow effect from before and we're done with the header. Now onto the body of the flyer. Let's go and create a new rectangle path, setting its size to 60 by 28 pixels. Drag and place the people 11 JPEG from the resource pack onto the canvas. Scale down the image and place it directly inside of the rectangle. Go back to the rectangle tool and in the options panel, click mask to again create a vector mask. Drag and drop the city 5 JPEG photo from the resource pack onto the canvas. Scale down the image and place it above the photo of the girl. Hold alt click and drag to duplicate the mask from the photo with the girl onto the new image. Repeat these steps to add a map onto your flyer. A placeholder map can be found in the resource pack. Go ahead and select your map layer and add a stroke layer effect, setting the stroke size to 2 pixels, adjusting the position to inside, and setting the color to brown, C30, M80, Y100, K30. Now use the type tool set to 11 points and a light brown color, C10, M65, Y100, K0, to create subheaders underneath all three images. Add more lines of information with the same font, set to a size of 9 points, just a bit smaller, and a leading of 13 points. Once done, drag and drop the icons file. You'll see you have a new window here, because you'll have to select which icon you want, in this case the calendar icon, uh, and then go ahead and click OK. Scale down the icon, placing it next to the line with the business hours. Repeat the same process to import the rest of the icons and placing them wherever they seem relevant. 
Once done, go ahead and create a heading over the map image, setting the size to 13 points, adjusting the leading to 11 points, and changing the color to a light brown. C10, M65, Y100, and K0. Next, directly underneath, add any street address or web information, and changing the color to a gray. Import the final globe vector icon onto the document, and scale down the icon, placing it next to the web address. Let's finish things up by creating a new circle, setting the color to a brown. Go ahead and select the pen tool, and hold down the Alt key and click at the bottom anchor point. This will convert the anchor point from smooth to a slight corner here. With the direct selection tool, move the converted anchor point down, making a pen or point shape. Move the pen so that it is hovering above your building or address. And finally, create a new circle filled with white and go ahead and place that circle into the center of the pen. And that's it. A flyer prepped and ready for print. This is just a starting point, so feel free to play with different colors, fonts, and shapes to really bring this flyer to the next level. And if you are short on time or don't have Photoshop handy at the moment, then head on over to placeit.net. It's your one-stop shop for dozens of flyer templates and mock-ups, all professionally designed and completely customizable, so you can get a print-ready design in just a matter of minutes. And that's it for now. If you like this video and would like to see more, consider giving us a like or even subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of all new videos, including tips, tricks, and tutorials. Happy designing. See you next time.